everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have your WWE Extreme Rules 2021 review for you guys. And I gotta say, man, coming into this show, pretty much regular rules, right? I mean, not a ton of stuff going on on this card as far as Extreme Rules stipulation. I do hate the name of the pay-per-view being Extreme Rules. I feel like we can get a lot more creative than that. It's just very watered down and dry. I don't know how you can be watered down and dry at the same time. You get what I'm pointing. You get what I did. They're kind of a synonym, if you will, even though they mean completely opposite things. I'm just gonna shut the hell up and tell you what I actually mean. WWE, like, everything's cookie cutter. Everything's just, you know, just straight in the line and nothing's ever really edgy or nothing's ever really outside the box or they hit you with some stuff, but they also fall flat on their face a lot of the time, but anyways, man, I'm excited for this card. Being With all that said, I am excited for this card. We got some solid matches on here. My boy Finn Balor, the demon, returning here tonight. I'm so excited for that, but yeah, man, let's go ahead and break down this show. You guys know how these videos work. We're gonna run through the entire experience rules card breaking down everything that happened at the show letting you guys know my thoughts and opinions on everything that happened was it great was it shitty was it somewhere in between we're gonna find out and i'm gonna let you know exactly my thoughts on everything where we may go from here and everything like that so with all of being said guys let's dive in to extreme rules 2021 and see what we got so starting off guys we have carmella taking on Liv morgan and in this matchup i didn't get to see much of it but Liv morgan did defeat carmella in a little less than eight minutes which was the right decision i'm glad they gave the victory to Liv morgan i think she she deserved it here in this matchup. Hopefully, this will lead to slowly building her up until one day she can get her championship opportunity. I know she has a ton of fandom. She has a bunch of people backing her, and she's getting better every week. So I like this decision, Liv Morgan getting the win over Carmella. I think it's the right call. I agree with it. Even though I missed the matchup, I agree with the result. So we open the main show up with a six-man tag. The New Day, the new Big E champion, the new Big E champion, the new big WWE champion, I should say. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods taking on Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omar. Six-man tag team matchup. This one was a very long opener, man. They they went for a minute. Like, it, it was a very long matchup. I don't even know the official time, but it had to be 20 minutes plus. Like, it was a long matchup, or at least it felt like it. I, I like some sequences here and there. You know, I'm not a very big fan of, like, Omos wrestling and stuff like that. Like, it, I don't know, man. Just, just a lot more work to be done there. And this match being thrown together last minute, this match being not promoted, and then it opening the show with your WWE champion and having that much time was very odd to me, but the right team won. New Day and the, the new WWE Champion Big E do win here in the six-man tag, which was absolutely the right call. Shouldn't have went any other way. He gets the win over Bobby Lashley, pinning him again, so I don't know, man. It looks like Big Bob is moving on, at least at this juncture. We'll have to see what comes of it, but New Day looked pretty good in this six-man tag. They gave him a lot of time. It was an interesting opener, and I like the matchup. I just thought that it went on forever. Like, it was definitely a long one, but the New Day get the victory. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between the Usos and the Street Profits, a matchup that I was looking forward to, you know, uh, you got two great tag teams here, every time I see Angelo Dawkins all I think about is, God, this figure looks terrible, right? I mean, this torso is just way too jacked, I wish that I could solve it and, and get something better, it's really, like, I don't even care what I have to do, I just want to fix it, because this is unbearable, also the legs the shorts are way too baggy, in my opinion, they could have done so much better on that figure, man, such a disappointment, but this matchup was pretty good, man I enjoyed it, I thought it was pretty good stuff here Great athleticism, you know, splashes and frogs and back and forth. Really fun and entertaining matchup, as we pretty much figured it would be, right? I mean, you have some great stuff here. And I also have the time for that six-man tag. It was actually 18 minutes, 15 seconds. So not quite 20 minutes, but it sure as hell felt like it. But this one went about 13 minutes. Pretty good, enjoyable match. But this one didn't feel long to me. It felt really quick, or not quick, but it felt really enjoyable. It wasn't, like, over-the-top crazy. So that was really nice to see. But the Usos retained the SmackDown tag titles as I think they should. I think that was a good call. I respect it here. I would have picked the same thing. I like the Street Profits but they're just not on the Uso level at this moment. So the Bloodline stray strong in this matchup with the Usos retaining their SmackDown tag titles. Next up guys was a Raw Women's Championship match. Charlotte defending against Alexa Bliss. Not a matchup that I was really looking forward to. I mean you do have the, the star the superstars in this. You know Alexa Bliss big time name. Charlotte Flair big time name. Both squaring off here for the Raw Women's Championship. Not a bad matchup. A lot better than I expected. Alexa Bliss looked a lot more crisp in this matchup. It just, it's one of those matches that I didn't care about the outcome because I don't care about the storyline with the magical doll and the lily and the, and the you know, just all that stuff, man. I'm just, I don't know. Without Bray Wyatt, I cannot get behind this character of Alexa Bliss's. It's just missing an element without Bray Wyatt, without the Fiend and all that stuff. And for some reason, man, I feel like Bray Wyatt's gonna show up on AEW on Wednesday. Don't ask me why. I just feel it. I don't know. I don't know, man. Just, uh, just a hunch. AEW's gonna get 
Bray Wyatt very soon, but that's besides the point. This matchup wasn't bad, but it's just one that I didn't care about the result for, so, you know, as good as the match was, or as solid as the match was, didn't really care for it, and the outcome is Charlotte Flair retaining, so there's that. After the matchup, Charlotte does, uh, pretty much rips Lily to a shred, and uh, all her stuffing goes everywhere. She's pretty much just lifeless in the middle of the ring. Alexa Bliss goes in there, picks up her remains, is bawling her eyes out and going crazy, goes to the stage, carrying her lifeless body and torn up pieces of her with her fuzz, and yeah, man, just uh, let's move on to something else and get this out of my face. Where's Ronda Rousey? Next up, guys, was the WWE United States Championship matchup, man. Triple Threat, Jeff Hardy, Damian Priest, the champ, and Sheamus. This matchup slapped all of the titties, man. Uh, you know, all the titties? All of them were slapped. Every titty in the match was slapped, okay? This matchup was incredible. I really enjoyed it. Uh, great moments all, all in all. You guys remember Sheamus and Damian Priest tearing the damn house down? Well, you added Jeff Hardy's element into it and made it uh, even better, man. Great near falls, great chemistry, great flow of the matchup. We got some two-on-two -two between all of the participants. One small little botchery where Damian Priest got one of his moves reversed into a twist of fate, but it like Jeff Hardy accidentally fell down. He like tripped up over his feet. Not a huge deal, though. I thought there was like five different occasions in this matchup where I thought Jeff Hardy was going to win, man. I was marking out. I, I picked Jeff to win. Like I really thought they were going to give it to him, and they made me a believer in this match, man. Jeff Hardy was super over. Crowd was chanting Hardy, Hardy. He was getting all of the best babyface pops. It didn't matter, man. Everybody wanted Hardy in this matchup to win, man. It was it was fantastic. Multiple shots where I thought he had it. Broke kick off the springboard. He threw Sheamus out of the ring. Kick out at two. Just a fantastic match, man. If you missed this one, definitely go check it out. Coming into the show, I thought this would be match of the night, and so far it was match of the night. You know, we still have two matches remaining on this card to cover, but at this moment of watching the show, this it has been match of the night for me, so we're just gonna have to roll on, man. Jeff Hardy was so freaking close, man. I wish they would've gave it to him. I understand it and everything, but damn, bro. Great matchup. I was marking out multiple times where I jumped up out of my seat thinking he had it, but ah! Jeff Hardy loses and Damian Priest, and Damian Priest does retain the U.S. Championship. Next up, guys, what's our SmackDown Women's Championship match? Becky Lynch taking on Bianca Belair. Now, I will say, these are two of my favorite ladies in WWE. As far as wrestling talent and superstars, man, this is where the pinnacle is. I also love Asuka as well, but these two are at the top of their game, man, right? So, Becky Lynch comes out in a sick-ass white gear, man. Anytime somebody comes out in white gear, it never fails that everybody blows me up on social media, and I love that, man. Keep doing that. Keep doing it. More people should get in on that. But yeah, the gear was fire. A little bit plain Jane, you know, with like it kind of just looked cheaply made, but it was still fire, because like just the all white with the silver and black was really sick, and also she wore like some custom boots that were like trainer shoes that like wrapped around her leg. I don't know what that was. Hopefully we get that in figure form, though, because it was sick AF. She also had her hair tied up in a, in a cool way, like with the braids on the sides. How However, this matchup was pretty good, you know, a lot better than that first go around where Becky beat the hell out of her, you know, and, and beat her in like 30 seconds. So this was a lot more fleshed out, a lot better of a matchup, but pretty much this, this matchup, uh, you know, it didn't break the bank. And the reason it didn't break the bank is because of somebody named Bank, or I should say Sasha Banks comes out near the end of the matchup and beats up Bianca Belair and then beats up Becky Lynch, causing disqualification. You know, she was supposed to originally get the SummerSlam matchup with Bianca Belair. That ended up not happening, and so uh, she's out for revenge, right? So I'm guessing we're going to get a triple threat, which is pretty damn badass. I think that'll be great. Uh, this this That matchup will slap. I love triple threat matches, and I think the, the build to this should be great. Hopefully we do end up getting a triple threat. I think it's inevitable at this point, but that was mainly the catalyst for this matchup, man. Lee to this triple threat and I'm all for it you know uh, things like this happen all the time and you know what better way for Sasha to return than at the pay-per-view here at Extreme Rules and causing this triple threat I wish we would have could have gotten more out of the match but it wasn't bad it wasn't great it was just one of those things that had to happen to get us where we got to go so Becky Lynch returns and uh, she's still your champion here after a Sasha Banks return and interference and for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, my boy, the Demon Finn Balor, taking on Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship Extreme Rules match, right? Well, Brad, this one was pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. The matchup all the way up until the finish or the last five minutes or so, I, I'd say was pretty damn good. Like, I really enjoyed the matchup. I liked the back and forth between them. Not a perfect match, but I really liked what they were doing. I liked the back and forth and everything like that. I felt like we got some cool spots and the interaction with the crowd and everything was really dope. Had some spots on top of the, the pre-show desk, which I was hoping somebody would go through, but 
I know that would be an absolute bish, and that'd be a hell of a bump. However, what in the hell was that ending? I'm glad I recorded my reaction, because I want to upload it. I gotta edit it together and everything like that, but that was just the weirdest, most just, what the blue hell did I just see? That reminded me a lot of, like, Fiend versus Seth Rollins from Hell in a Cell. I'd say not quite as bad, but, like, it just looks so stupid, right? It was so dumb. How dumb? So, if you guys did not know, Finn Balor hits a coup de grace. Now, there was some good storytelling here because he hits the coup de grace on Roman Reigns, and he goes for the pin. He gets the two count, which would have been a three count, but the Usos pulled him out. But I liked that, you know, people will say, well, he already kicked out of the coup de grace. Yes, but he kicked out of the coup de grace to the regular Finn Balor, not Demon Finn Balor. So, the, the coup de grace holds more weight with the Demon. So, I like that they protected it in that way. The Usos beat up on Finn. Finn battles back. He uh, puts one of the Usos on the barricade, puts one of them through the announcer's table with a power bomb. Funny enough, it's kind of like a freaking, like, random 2K move through the table. After said events, Finn Balor rolls out, or, like, does, like, a spin, and Roman Reigns spears him through the barricade, taking and laying him out. So, they're both laying there. All four men are laid the hell out on the outside. The barricade's broken down. There's a table on the outside. The announce table's crushed. Everybody's just hurting and in pain. Out of nowhere, the lights turn red, and you start hearing this heartbeat. I'm like, what the hell's going on, Brad? I was like, is the Fiend back? Is this Bray Wyatt? Is this some other character? What the hell's going on? All of a sudden, as the heart is beating, Finn Balor's demon character is on the floor, like, convulsing with the heartbeat. So, it's the demon, and he's, like, kind of, like, reviving back to life is what they're trying to tell us here. The music picks up. Finn Balor pops back to his feet. Huge pop. Apparently, the song revived him. The lights are red. He goes into Super Saiyan mode, starts beating the hell out of Roman. Shotgun drop kick through a table, throws him into the ring, goes up to the top turnbuckle for the coup de grace to finish the job, and the, the top turnbuckle snaps off, breaks, Finn Balor falls from the top rope, falls on his leg, he sells a knee injury, gets speared, and loses one, two, three. What the hell? We've never seen this from the Demon before. We've never seen Finn Balor do this with the rejuvenation with the music. At least I haven't. Never seen that before. And then this lame-ass finish where he goes up to the top rope and the turnbuckle just breaks on him for no reason so that Roman Reigns doesn't have to drop the title and you try to 50-50 book and protect both characters? What a lame-ass way of protecting him, man. I think that's super lame. What a lame-ass way to protect somebody, man. That was just lame to me. I did not like that whatsoever. Again, I did record my reaction. I'll have to try and upload that this week or tomorrow or something. Holy God in heaven. I did not like that. That was that was a trash finish. Roman Reigns retains the Universal Championship, and I don't even know what to talk about with this show anymore, but that blew my damn mind, man. I expected Brock Lesnar or something. That didn't happen. The Usos came out, which I expected too, but holy Christ, that makes the demon look idiotic. And I thought a loss would ruin the demon. I think that's worse, what they just did. You bring the demon back like that, and then he gets pinned and looks like a dumb jackass because he falls off the top rope. That's, like, just so illogical, right? Like, you're this super saiyan being. Like, you're a fucking entity. You're not a human. So, if the demon steps off the curb wrong and, like, tweaks his ankle, that, that means that the demon can literally be walking in the grocery store and, like, just step off a ledge and just kind of tweak his ankle and him be like, Oh, my God. God, that's so stupid, dumb, idiot, awful. Anyways, I expected him to lose anyway, so I mean, you know, there's that, but, uh, yeah, I just, I'm not even, I don't even know, man, what the blue hell was that? I'm getting out of here, man, I don't even know what to say. Show wasn't bad, it had some dumbass things happen on it. I mean, nothing like, I, I don't know, like, the hype going into this show wasn't very high, except, like, I, I was looking forward to some matches, Triple Threat was solid, Six Man Tag was solid, really enjoyed the Triple Threat. This matchup was great, but this finish was garbage, man, but that does it for your Extreme Rules review, man. I, I don't know what else to say outside of that. I did my best to give you everything there. The demon paint also was the same demon paint that he's been rocking last couple times we've seen the demon on SmackDown, so there's that, too. I don't know, man. I'm getting the hell out of here. Don't cross the line like that jackassery finish we just seen. What in the hell was that? You crossed the line.